there's a couple of basics before we get going, I guess. Um, it's useful to set out and be very clear about what we're looking for and why. Do we want to know about their finances, tax, ownership, or in terms of products? Do we want to know what it manufactures? Is it just that it's an arms company? Do we suspect that their equipment is used by the Saudi military in Yemen or the police in the US or Hong Kong? Are you producing a leaflet, a web page, or a report? All of that sort of thing helps to identify the most appropriate sources and make prioritization easier. And then of course, rigor. We have to be accurate. We don't want to be stretching the truth. Caveats may be necessary. We need to check sources. How reliable are they? Can we corroborate them? At least, to, if not absolutely, but to give us a, a sense check. Can we check the data of information, company ownership and our activities change? And we need to be aware of terminology and careful about rewriting military jargon. Um, importantly, we need to save or print information that's referenced or is important to our case. Um, some sources don't stay available for very long and almost anything can be removed and some things get removed very quickly. And finally, bear in mind libel and copyright, which gets less attention. We haven't really got obviously time to go into those, but just a heads up. Um, we haven't got much time, as I say, so I'm pretty much going to just zip through a bunch of sources. Um, don't worry about noting them all. We will put these out afterwards, um, as Sienna said. Um, and I'm going to look at them in terms of major companies where there's a different type of information available or different sources, smaller companies, and then a couple of key resources we use for all all of our research on companies. So first of all, the big companies, people like BAE, Rolls-Royce, and the non-UK ones like Talos, Leonardo, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, all with significant UK presence, but not UK owned. So a company's website is where we mostly all start. You can get a quick overview of capabilities. I won't spend very long on this. Um, they might provide a list of addresses. That's getting less common, actually. It used to be just hordes of full addresses. Now it's often just contact information, even for the bigger ones. That takes a bit of digging. They might provide press releases about particular deals or arms fairs. This is Leonardo. They love to tell us all about the arms fairs they're going to. I hope this, that's not too fast. Leonardo with Dicey 2019. So there's a fair amount of information on there. Their annual reports have similar information, but obviously more on finances, maybe tax, shareholding directors, definitely worth a look. Usually pretty sketchy information about contracts, but it's worth digging into them and the specific company because some of them, this is Talus, uh, French owned. And this is just one area of their work. They've, they've got a very detailed list of contracts, Switzerland, France, Morocco, Kazakh, Netherlands, Romania, and this, you know, this is throughout a section of their documents. So for some of the companies, it's worth digging in a lot more. You can get a lot of information. Um, outside of the company itself, you can get a lot from trade magazines. Jane's Defence Weekly is useful. Interesting things like Air Force's Monthly, Flight International, all of these. This is Jane, this is Defence News from the US. Um, tend to have a lot, they, they might have more detail and analysis about deals, um, not all officially announced, um, though they don't tend to be very critical, unsurprisingly. National and local newspapers, obviously good. They tend to not have much detail generally and not have much that's not in these kind of magazines, but they might look at con controversies. So controversial deals, bribery, political influence, you might get investigations there, so obviously well worth a look. Other good source, SIPRI, Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. This is something we use in our, we keep this data in our data tools, and they categorize the top 100 arms companies. And it says what their arms sales are, what percentage of it, their turnover it is. They've also got a fantastic um, arms transfer database, 
it's pretty hard to use and not a thing of beauty but it's got major conventional weaponry it's got you know a very comprehensive major um, list of the deals so if you, it doesn't give company names but if you know what a company produces and where it's likely to have sold it from there's a lot of information there well worth going to i'll make sure that's linked to you obviously we like to um, know what's already been done so we go to other campaign organizations or research bodies this is declassified it's a new uh, a new website with with investigations um, but there's many others of course the ferry lots of ngos and there's additional official information like the government's um sorry i can't see past my sharing icon so the government provides some information as well so if we're interested in what the, what the uk government's spending on the arms industry and military service companies they do provide some breakdown so there are resources there as well I won't go into, but there's freedom of information requests uh, are possible. We'll have to do that in another session. And often for companies, it's quite hard to get past um, breach of confidence and commercial interests exemptions. The submissions to Parliament, they can be useful. A company or a, or a trade association might put one of those in. Court documents, they're quite rare. But when they do happen, there can be a lot of detail, which is something obviously that um, companies tend to avoid going to court. And that's that's one of the reasons or is a particular reason for controversial companies. And finally, there are special interest groups. Plane spotters have been particularly useful sometimes. They would they log individual aircraft and know whether it's destined for a particular country and where it's been tested, say at Wharton, for testing for export to Saudi, those might be logged and uploaded on there on, on, online. So that's a lot of stuff for the big companies, recognizable big equipment. For the smaller companies, um, there's, there's not so much, we could split it into companies where there's a finished product, such as small arms or ammunition, and the companies where they do subsystems or widgets, components. It's very hard to find things out there. It's pretty much what they choose to put out. And their, their website is obviously the first place to go. Um, oh, you. you might find extremely detailed things there, like this is Pfizer Pi Optics, big brochures. Sometimes they'll be linked to the main site. Sometimes you might need a Google search to get behind the main links on the site and see what presentations and brochures are lurking there. There's a lot of detail there. Or you might get very vague things like this. This is a sort of classic piece of terminology. Contracts for military aircraft programs, services for submarine and land-based weapons platforms. That's a sort of range of things you might get. You can get a lot, you can get almost nothing. Um, one thing that's surprising is how hard it can be sometimes to get address information it might be on the website it just might not be you might get something from company's house this is accuracy international they're a sniper a, um, a sniper rifle company but they just really have a registered address we don't know where their production is from this it's not on their website um, we did find where we think the production is i don't know if you can see here there's a very strange shaped building here with a car park that doesn't go anywhere at the end and it was only through the planning applications that it became apparent that that's a ballistic tunnel. So that's why the strange shaped car park to allow for the ballistic tunnels for testing underneath. Anyway, that's obviously a place where they produce or at least test their equipment, but that's straight from the planning applications and isn't actually available anywhere else. Local papers can be helpful again. Libraries in the business sections, local business directories, you can approach the company as well and it can be helpful they can at least deny if you've got if you're in the local area there might be more motivation for them to respond although sometimes they have responded to us as well and then last the two sources that are good for many larger and smaller companies arms fair information is one so 
obviously this is a place where companies are promoting themselves so they might say more than you might we might normally get they might tweet more this is a connected company signing a deal with um, Saudi Arabian military industries at Dicey there's quite a lot of tweeting goes on around these you might see people you might see delegations going around stands so you can get a sense of market intent um, there might be blurb that goes along with that then there's off there's nearly always an exhibitor list you can get hold of sometimes it's more detailed and there might be a little bit of blurb here's one for company I don't know much about and a video and so you get you might you might find something that's worthwhile in there and you might find addresses and the last thing is the arms export license applications data and we use that quite a lot it's from our own freedom of information requests and it looks a bit scary when we first see it because it's just massive spreadsheets and we have pulled this into our data tools though not as attractively as other things for a lot of companies there's there is nothing about their arms exports their arms export intent at all um, but the government for a period up to 2015 provided us with data on comp license company the destination and the goods rating so here ml1 is small arms ml10 is aircraft so you've got a pretty good idea of what a company is trying to sell to which country and there's about a thousand companies each year we get data we've got data for and here there's about eighty-one thousand records so there's a massive pile of data and so we've got something on most nearly all uk arms companies um, it's not all available on the website um, it is in this sense, but not in a more attractive sense, but we are working on that and we're trying to get more up-to-date data, but it still gives a picture that we wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. So I think that rounds that off.